today is a last class but definitely we will study a lot of different things guys we will try to wrap up with some additional knowledge on whatever we have done then i'll explain to you again what you have to do in your project and then <coughs> i'll provide you with the attendance link and yeah then we'll terminate with the class route router and provider sure guys i'll explain it so as we are waiting definitely we can do that let me just explain you guys what exactly router route and provider is guys so guys provider is nothing but whenever you uh, as we know that our whole react application is a tree structure of components and every component can have its child components and it can be as many as possible right there can be multiple like you can see this is for one of the examples i want to show you now guys uh, there is something known as provider which is a sort of a component which is required whenever you are creating or whenever you are using react router dom guys provider is basically nothing but type of a packet okay it is type of a packet which tells you that all the components which are inside this packet would be able to use that you can say router functionality or able to create that router functionality that is what it means so for example i can create or basically i can use the provider at this place i can say i can create a provider at this place that means that my whole application only in my whole application these two pages will be able to create routes create pages and create multiple pages but most of the times this is not the case most of the time in our whole application i want that at any place i am able to use something known as routes so i should be able to create router and routes multiple pages so rather than doing it here we always do it at the top level which is index.js so in the index.js we wrap our app component with something known as provider so we say provider or you can say uh yeah we can say provider and inside the provider we say app right we terminate the app and then this is wrapped inside the provider component now guys in the latest version of react router dom this provider has been replaced with something known as browser router so you might be seeing something like browser router okay so provider and browser router are exactly the same so if you write browser router it does the same work as provider guys it is just a packet and it tells you that at the bottom whatsoever routes or whatsoever components are they can use multi page components or they can be using routes so they can create multiple pages that is what it means it is just a packet which basically tells you that anything or any component below this component would be able to use this okay use routes now what is router and what is routes so guys router is nothing but a box which contains multiple openings so router is nothing but a box it contains multiple openings and at a time you can be at any one of them okay and these multiple small openings are known as route okay router is a box route is a single opening and a single opening basically route represents a page okay so a single opening represents a page and you can have multiple pages definitely you can have multiple pages but as we know at a point we can be only at a single page we can be present at a single page that is what route is okay that is the difference between provider route and router okay i think now it should be clear that what each each one of these does and if it is not yet clear please read over it please uh, just review it because we have uh, basically discussed it in brief in our previous lectures okay so guys yeah guys good evening everyone for anyone who has joined recently and we will start with the class by yeah okay it is already 5 6 so let's start with it guys so we were talking about state management right state management and we talked about something known as inside it states we have already talked about it and in the states we have already talked about use state and how to use it how to update it right absolutely we have talked about it now there is one more thing we need to talk about that is known as props okay props that is one of the important things now guys similar to what we know 
see guys uh, one syntax i need you to be very familiar with now guys we know that if we are using let's say a uh, h1 tag we know that uh, with the h1 tag there are some attributes we can use with it okay let's say i can use a class name attribute so that i can provide it a class name i can use a id attribute okay now these are some things which are predefined in html okay and that is what we are using but something similar to this can be made by us in components as well so whenever we are writing a component let's say we created an app component okay so with that app component we can pass some data into it okay that is very useful so app component earlier we used to close it like this or either we used to close it app and slash app this is how we used to close it now guys what we can do now is basically we have a structure present so for example this is my app component or this is my app page okay this is my app component app.jsx and now i'm using it inside my index.jsx file and in my index let's say i write app and this is what i'm telling you guys so if you create something of your own like this if you create a attribute of your own that is known as a prop okay that is what it is known as let's say i create a attribute named name okay it is just like a variable and let's say i am storing inside it data aditya okay that is my name a string i am storing inside it and i can close it that's it guys this is known as a prop okay this is known as a prop because it is not defined but you are sending some data with the component you are sending some data with the component from another component so you're passing data from one component to another how is that possible i am passing some data from index.js to app.js right because in the index.js i have used this section but in the app.js i would receive this data guys i would be able to receive this data which is present here that is what props are used for so we saw that state can be used if we want to have some data and we want to use it in our single pay or you can say single component but what if i want to pass some data from one component to another how can we do it we can use props for it okay so if i want some data only for my component i would use state if i want some data passed to my children component i will use props props only work in a general format guys a parent in a parent i can pass a prop and that will be received by my children or you can say by my component so let's see it guys how it is actually working that is very simple guys okay let me just show you how exactly it works yeah guys i am from india i am from delhi okay so let's start with it so we are in index.js okay uh, index.js let's not do it here let's go to pages guys so at this point what i want to do is pretty simple guys let me just first okay let me just go to the history once and there should be okay let me just open it guys i want to basically open the output copy it paste it here hit enter and we should see the output now guys what exactly am i trying to do uh let's say let's say this is what we are trying to do let me just give you example let's say we have a home page right we have a home page and in the home page let's say for example i have home page i know i also have something known as get help page right get dash help page okay now let's say in both of them i am showing a heading at the top in both of them i am showing a heading at the top and that says the exact same to the route let's say uh, the route is what we are saying so i am at get help page so it should show slash uh, you can say in the heading get help if i am at home page it should show home at the top like this okay that is what i am showing now it is fine guys i can simply write this html code inside my get help page and write this html code inside my home page and it would work but guys would it actually be useful if i ha have to update it it is not guys the reason being i'll have to first open my get help file i'll have to update it here i'll have to open home file and i'll have to update it here but is there a way that i can make it updatable at a single place 
that uh, let's say ki i am only in a single file and i can update both of them yes how with the help of props you just pass some data while calling this component pass some data while calling this component how you pass props into it how can you, you can do that it is very simple guys let's do it so let's say that i uh, i am using both of them in app right so let's say i am in app file i am in app.jsx so wherever i would be using home component right i imported home component well i'll use home component i'll simply say home and i will pass with the home a property a prop known as title okay this is what i'll pass and inside it i will say home this is what my heading needs to say guys very simple and similarly when i'll use get help i will say title again i will pass a property known as title and that will basically say get space help and that's it guys that is it that is how simple it is we created two props which we are sending in each one of the component and now these components would be able to access this title property and use it simply in the h1 what they can do simply in the h1 they can in the curly braces look for this title property they can write here title and that's it guys that is it now it is dynamic now this title basically inside my home or my get component is being passed from my app component right because this line of code is written in app and this line of code is written in home page or get jsx page so now whenever i need to update it i'll simply go to the app.js page i will update either this or this and both the pages will have the updates that is how simple it is guys that is how simple it is and that is how you can use props let's do this guys so let's do it and let's see it in action so we'll go to app.jsx and you can see at the bottom this is the place right this is the place home and contact and get help let's say in the, uh, in all of these three we will send a property or a prop you can say title okay and guys consider it like a variable it is exactly like a variable okay so it can store whatever you want it can store a string it can store you can say array it can store uh, numbers yes definitely it can so let's say it stores home it stores home dash page okay let me just scroll it a little okay guys just give me a second i'll have to reload this page yes so i think we should be able to re yes now here you can see i have said a title home page similarly i will give a contact page also a title it can be anything guys this property name can be anything and let's say it says contact contact page similarly i can send a title here and that would let's say say get help page okay these are the three things or these are the three props i'm sending in each one of them so in the first one i have a prop title in the contact i have a prop title and in the you can see get help component i have a title which i'm sending now what i can do i can simply close this file i'm done here guys i can go to my pages these are my three pages first home page then get help page and then contact page okay now guys you can see this is contact page okay let's start here so when i was sending that uh, prop known as title i can access it here how can i do that it is very simple guys you can access that with the help of something known as props so you can in this brackets basically accept it like this so guys consider it like a function okay so if you have ever worked with normal c++ you would have created some functions and you would know that in the functions you can pass something known as attributes or parameters to it okay so it is somewhat similar to that so you can receive all the data which you have passed to it here in terms of like this props guys and that's it guys you have now access to every single property or every single prop you sent to it from app.js so inside you can see my contact page i'm using it so in my contact page now i will be able to access this title property but it will be present inside this prop variable 
okay so how can we access it simply replace it with like this curly braces at least is a variable but now how to access the title property as i said it is stored inside props i can do that by writing this dot operator props dot title so whatever property you send with it would be stored in that props guys so let's say if i send one more property with contact let's say date okay let's say i send a one more property known as date and it stores today's date which is 14 01 2022 okay and it is in a string format and let's say if i want to receive it here how can i receive it i can simply write this let me just cut it out let me just create a fragment so that we do not get this error and now inside h1 after h1 let's say i also display a paragraph and inside the paragraph what do i need to do props dot date and that's it guys now i will also be able to access this date which i'm sending here so if i now go to contact page and if i refresh the page you can see here guys now i'm seeing at the top contact page at the bottom i'm seeing the date this is what you need to do in every single page guys so this is how you can access props this is how you can access props by in the function just writing this variable props and whatsoever pass you you pass here as a prop will be present inside this props variable and you can access it with the help of dot parameter okay this is known as dot okay dot parameter you can access it with the help of it so let's use this in get help as we know in the get help also we are passing a props so like this props and now what i can do i can simply replace it with the variable props dot get uh let's say title yeah it was uh, we were sending title similarly in the home here here we'll say props and now where so ever we were showing the title yes here we will replace it with props dot title now one of my problems is resolved guys why because now i can see that every single page would be updated on the home page i would see home page on my contact page i'm seeing contact page on my get help page i'm seeing get help page now guys if i want to change any one of them in future i don't need to open each one of these files i'll simply go to app.jsx i can see these are the titles of each and every page i can simply update at a single page whatsoever i want and that will be updated let's say on the contact page i'm just showing contact and not the page okay every single where i'm just showing home i'm just showing get help not the page now the page has been removed from every single one of them you just update it and that's it guys home contact get help not page so you can see that is very simple now guys is it clear is it clear how props work props are used for sending data from one component to another here we are sending data from component app to component home component get help and component contact how many students are present guys let me check guys there are 100 students come on guys yeah yes or no and if doubt please be specific okay if you want me to repeat yes i can so let me know now okay because this is the last day and definitely okay clear cool nice let's wait guys let's wait for some more replies and then we'll continue guys okay now guys definitely you understood it but how would you exactly use it where would you use it because sometimes people get confused guys guys will get to use effect maybe we might not use it but i'll tell you what exactly use effect is and yeah we'll try to understand it okay so guys when will you use it when you want to centralize some data guys that is the point okay whenever you want to centralize and store some data you will use props whenever you want to just have data in a single component you will use states okay uh, let's say for example i know that some data would only be shown in this single component okay then i'll use a state i know that this data is only getting or going to be used by a single component i will use state but if but if if i know that that data might be used by multiple components at the same time i will use props 
I will go to the highest level. Let's say that I have three components, right? I have three components and they are uh, selected or they are connected to one component. I know that each one of them requires exactly same data. Okay. Each one of them requires exactly same data. Then rather than hard coding that data in every single one of them, would it not be better if I can just pass it from one component to another? Yes. I'll simply pass it from this component to all these components and then I can access them here and I can use them. And whenever I change it here, whenever I update it here, that will be updated in each one of the component. So that is more effective and easy to do, right? That is how it is easy to manage. You have centralized data. You have centralized all your data at a single place and you are just, you are just using it from that place. That is why props are very important because you will use props at a lot of time. Yeah, guys, no issue. So let's say, let's say that you created a single page. Okay. So let's say that you created a single page and in that single page, that single page is being uh, used inside or imported or shown inside app.jsx. And let's say in the app.jsx, when whenever you were using this component or displaying this component, you pass some props. It totally depends on you guys, whatever you want to do with the data. Okay. I just gave you a use case that it is mostly used for centralizing your data, but there can be multiple cases. Maybe you just want some data to be passed from here to the component. And that is how, why you are doing it. But yes, there can be different test cases guys. When you will apply it, when you will work with it, you'll get to know better. Okay. When you will see different use cases, you will know. Now props are done. Okay. Let's talk about uh, a very important thing guys which is life cycle method. And someone was asking what is use effect. You'll get to know what use effect does in the same. Okay. Use effect is also a hook guys. Similar to what we, uh, what we used yesterday, which was a use state that was also a hook. And similarly use effect is also a hook and it is, or it has something to do with again state. Okay. Hooks mostly have to do with something like state or prop. So let me just open a new image guys. This is the image and this is what guys, this is known as the life cycle of in react guys, life cycle of a component. This is what it is known as life cycle of a react component. So guys, whenever a react component is present or whenever a react component you create, it can go through these different steps. Okay. That is what it means. These different life cycle methods. These are the different steps in which it can be present. We'll talk about the most important one, right? So react components, very important guys, because this is what will make your base of react and you need to know it if you want to work with it properly. Okay. Guys, if you want to uh, basically know about state, please watch the previous video. We have talked in brief about it. Okay. So what are life cycle methods guys? It just simply shows that what exactly your component is at this point. What is it doing at this point? So guys, we know that a component can have different states. How do we know that? We know that a component either can be displayed, right? If I'm, uh, if I have a page which is loaded, let's say I'm on home page, then I know that I need to have home page component on the screen. I know that home component would be present on my screen. It needs to be loaded. But if I move out of this page, I know that this need, this component needs to be removed from here, right? So there can be different stages. It can be present. It can not be present. It can be loading itself. It can be deleting itself from the screen. So there are different stages. Okay. Understood what exactly stages I'm talking about. It can be loading. It can be loaded, successfully loaded. It can be removing or removed, successfully removed. These are kinds of states. Okay. And that is what they are talking about. So there is something known as these three states you will talk about in terms of component mounting, updating, and unmounting. You can see here mounting, 
updating and unmounting and these always happen in a sequence from left to right okay this is the sequence if a component is not mounted it cannot be updated or unmounted okay that is what you need to understand so let's say so what is mounting guys what does mounting mean okay so if you even uh, just search for the general meaning of mounting you will understand that kisi cheez ko rakhna samne okay that is what mounting means to just display something okay that is what mounting means mount karna okay so what does it exactly mean it means to load your component to you can say your virtual dom or to your dom or to your screen guys that is what mounting means so whenever a component or whenever you refresh your page for the first time and if you are on home page then your home page will get mounted guys so what will happen your home component would get first mounted mounted meaning it will get loaded and then displayed on your screen that loading and displaying on the screen is known as mounting guys okay so the process of loading this component and displaying this on the screen is known as mounting similarly when you move out of this page or when you move out of your website let's say i just moved out of my website or let's say i just moved from home page to contact page then i don't require this component on the screen so this will be unmounted this will be removed from the page or in the terms removed from the dom okay document object model tree structure this will be removed from the dom because that is what eventually shows you data on the screen so it will be removed from the page and that is what is known as unmounting removing a component from the dom or from the screen so that it is no more visible no more accessible that is what unmounting means these are the two main important things now what is updating guys and we have already done that we have done updating by using set state so set state is one of the reasons because of which your component updates now guys one thing or one funda you need to remember that whenever you are using something related to state and if it is used or if it is that state is created with the help of you state then you get very you can say sort of super power okay inside react how guys when uh, one of the things uh, i would like to explain advantage of react is that it just refreshes that component which is required to be let's say that i am on a home component right it is my home page and in my home page i have three uh, three different components and let's say there is some update made only in the first component then only that component will refresh or reload itself rest of the components would say exactly the same and that is the beauty of react guys rest of the components do not touch themselves they remain wherever they are however they are without changing anything only the component which has been updated refreshes itself and that is what we did when we used state okay so when we use state set state and we created a variable let's say we created a variable name so it was doing what it was updating okay so whenever we created it and whenever we were calling set name the function set name it was simply saying first check that is the update really needed to be done and if it is needed to be done then simply refresh your page and update this value and then show this new value okay so what was being done it was first checking that is the update really possible or is it needed okay is it needed if yes then it will update it if no then it won't update it okay and then therefore it won't be refreshed when is the no condition possible let's say that i had a variable with which i created with the help of set state known as number and it was already storing a value 2 and i was using set number and then again i was trying to change its value to 2 no use why cuz i already have that value i don't need to refresh my page it is just a expensive task right it is expensive definitely cuz it will require some resources some energy some ram it will require something 
and therefore it is not performed and that is why the, uh, that is when no condition is applied else if there is some update let's say if it was 4 or anything else it would say yes and it would be updated and this number would now store 4 now guys clear how mounting updating and unmounting works firstly just let me know that then we'll get into the deeper knowledge of what exactly all of these things are what is constructor Componented mount and what is all of this? Okay, great. Let's continue guys. If that is clear now, it won't be a problem because it will be quite easy. So till now, mounting, updating and unmounting we have talked about them. Now there are certain methods or certain functions through which you can check what exactly is happening. So if you are in the mounting stage, you can perform or you can call a function known as component dead mount. Okay. This is a predefined function created by react. And if you want to check that is this component really mounted? If this component really present on the screen? Yes, you can do that with the help of component dead mount. You can call this function and you can write some code inside it and that will be implemented if this function gets mounted on the screen. Let's say I was not at home page, I was at contact page and I use this component did mount function in the home page. Let's say I used component did mount in the home page. Then what will happen whenever I move from contact or any other page to the home page, it will check for this condition. Was the component really mounted? Guys, just give me a sec. Just one sec. Uh, there is an important call I need to attend, guys. So I will just minimize something. Yeah, sorry guys. Let's continue. So yeah, we were talking about this. So let's say you are at any other page, just not at home page. And now at any point you enter into home page. So what will happen? Mounting will happen. Right, mounting will happen. And therefore, if you call this function or if you anywhere create this check, which says component did mount. It is a question mark guys. Did the component really mount? Did the component really load on the screen? And if yes, then uh, there in this function, you will have some line of code. You can do whatever you want. Okay. You can write some code to console log some statement. You can print a warning to the user. You can do a lot of things whatsoever you want. Normal JavaScript code, whatever you want. And you can write it inside it and that would be implemented. Okay. So that is what component dead mount is used for. So at every stage, you can perform certain tasks or you can do so something inside it. And that is what these functions are used for. It is used for checking that is it really happening? And if it is happening, then do this. Similarly, you have this here component did update question mark. So it's the component really updating. And if it is update updating, do these set of steps or do this set of steps. Similarly, component did unmount. So whenever I leave the home page, am I really leaving the home page? Is this component really getting deleted from the page? Question mark. If yes, then do this or uh, do this set of codes. Very easy to understand. Okay, these, this is what these things are. And this these are life cycle. Guys, this is what life cycle is. Mounting, updating, unmounting. These are some additional features or additional methods provided to you by react so that you can do certain different things at those stages or as at those life cycle of component. Now guys, one thing. So if it is clear guys, first, is it clear till now? Is it clear how to use all these three? Okay, we won't be using them because these are something which were earlier used in class based components. So guys, in functional components, you won't find component dead mount. No, you can't use it. 
component did update no you can't use it component will update unmount no you can't use it these three things are not usable inside functional based components but yes they are required to be understood okay if i just took you to the use effect hook because all of these three guys this component did mount component did update component will unmount these all three things can be done by a single hook that is known as use effect use effect can check for all of these three things okay use effect can check for either this either this either this all of these three in a single effect or in single single hook i can do that guys okay that is possible cuz i can't use these things but if i would have directly jumped to that you would not have been able to understand it okay that is why you need to first understand this basic life cycle method which is used in class based components guys okay it is the same now constructors guys are also not present in terms of functional based components not present this method not present this method is also not present this method is also not present these all three things yes are possible and can be done but it will uh, it all can be done with the help of simple use effect use effect is possible of doing this this and this constructors are not required constructors are guys something else in terms of class based components no need to worry about them they are something it is just guys uh, written the method or written the, the procedure in which they are loaded guys that is what it is written okay so if you are uh, basically thinking that why are there arrows it simply shows that what is loaded first so when mounting happens first the constructor is created then your render so render inside render guys there is something known as return okay so inside render there is known as return inside function we directly used return so yes that is what it means so after a constructor being created or after constructor being placed on the screen then rendering used to happen okay that is what used to happen then after that updating the dom okay dom used to be updated and the content used to be displayed on the screen and after that if you have created or used this function then it would be checked that is how the process is okay this is what the process is actually talking about that is what it is talking about that how exactly things are loaded on the screen similarly at the time of updating that at the time of updating the first thing it will check for is props or se uh, set state so guys i told you that states are responsible for updating but props are also responsible for updating the component that is why that is why we were able to see the new updates whenever we were changing the props so let's say if i am at app page or uh, let's say if i am at app component and if i just suddenly at any point change this title right this title property to something else i just uh, wrote, uh, write something inside it i just update it then that home component would automatically know that my this component needs to be updated so states at the time of state update happens if states are updated and even at the type of props this happens okay even at the type of props the you can say your component gets updated so very useful both of them updated now yeah guys uh, should component update yes this is also a question mark it says that uh, it just checks that did the props really update that is a question mark should component really update right did the props really change yes then only this function would happen or this thing would happen and then only reloading would happen rendering would happen then only dom would be created then only component did update would be checked okay that is how it will uh, move and if, if this is not the case if there was no update in props there is second option is the state updated so if there was any state update then only it will re-render re then only it will change the dom and then only it will mount or uh, they, it will check for component did update similarly in unmount there is only one thing it checks for that if actually the component is being removed from the screen or from the dom simply component will unmount it will check for it question mark did it happen guys uh, okay a main difference between state and props yes guys states is the data which is only represented inside a component so if you have a component and inside that component you have some data which can update 
and it only needs to exit exist inside only that component then that can that is to be created or that should be created with the help of state so state is only about its own component okay only talking about my own component my individual i'm talking about me myself that's it that is what state it now props basically means the data i need to pass from one component to another component states my own data i'm not talking about anything else it is just my own data which i would use in my component props basically says that this is my data in one component i want to pass that data to my child component always the child component so when you pass the data from one component to another that is props and when you passed uh, when you need data only inside your own component that is known as state guys got it got the difference between props and states yes guys okay great now let's use it guys cuz i told you that these are not accessible but we can use use effect to basically do either this either this or either this so let's do it let's use use state and let's do it so what we'll do is basically in the home component we already have in the home component something known as this right we already have this hidden and unhidden property what we'll do is we'll simply go here i'll remove this property and i'll simply say let's say toggle okay let me just uh, let me just do this it is better okay what we'll do we will first import our new hook which is use effect guys use effect this is how you use it use effect you imported use effect okay now you can use it yeah guys now we can use it how we can simply say here use eff ect use effect and i told you it is a function like this okay and that's it guys it needs to be a self closing function inside itself it is a function which you call and inside that function you call a call back guys this is a call back statement so this is how you call that function use effect but inside the use effect you need to also pass another call back function this is known as a call back function guys and it basically means that if use effect is being used then write or then do this set of things i can write here whatever i want okay and that will be implemented let's say console dot log and inside the console dot log i will say component mounted okay i've done it okay and now you need to also pass here something known as second parameter which is dependency now what did i do here guys because it is important to remember so this is how you create a use effect okay let me just use it this is how you create use effect and this is known as a callback what is a callback this is known as a callback it simply means that whenever this use effect function would be called i can write my own set of code which i want to be basically run which i want to run whenever this use effect gets called so that is what you write inside the callback so if everything is successful and use effect is being called then please do these uh, lines of code or please run this lines of code that is what that means use effect or callback now after this what is this what is this comma and these square brackets these are known as dependencies guys this is known as dependency okay and dependency basically means when to update or when to reload okay that is what dependency means so guys if you remember i told you that our component reloads itself whenever there is a change whenever there is a change in the state right let's first see how to implement component did mount so the first uh, this is component did mount i will show how to implement component did mount okay so this was the check to ch uh, basically check if the component has been loaded on to the screen or not this is what it means and this is what the syntax is guys if this dependency array is empty which means that this line of code whatever you write inside here would run only at once when this line of code would run whenever this component is loaded on to your screen or on into your dom 
that is what this empty dependency means these are dependencies guys okay i'll t uh, we'll talk about more what dependencies mean but uh, after seeing this output okay so let's use it let me just move out of this page let me go to first contact page okay now i have made a console log statement guys and this should what should i i should get so if i go here right click inspect and if i go to console now guys here guys console this is known as console guys okay right click inspect and here in the top console okay so whatever uh, uh, javascript you are running guys that basically is implemented you can say in your application and that can be viewed inside your console and console is basically in the browser you can run javascript code and that can be done inside this console you can see this is the console guys i can run here javascript code let's say i want to create a constant aditya and i want to store inside it something let's say i want to store my own name and that is it guys i created a constant known as aditya if i want to display the screen you can see i have created a constant and i have just displayed it so i can run javascript inside here okay that is what it means so let me just clear it guys this is what console is guys okay where you can run your javascript code inside your whole application and this is guys connected to your website okay so what i want to observe is in this console the first time i move to my home page i should see this component mounted okay this is what i should be displayed with so let's go to home screen and you can see i got a message component mounted it means my component successfully got mounted how can i verify it if i move out of this screen or uh, you can say i am at home page let's move to contact page and you won't say this message printed again why cuz it is only to be printed at the time of mounting okay i've said component did mount it is similar to component did mount at the point of mounting so let's move to contact page you can see that did not get printed now let's go back let's go back to home page and you will see again component mounted yes you can see two okay so it was a repeat thing that is why it just simply said two okay it means it was called two times once earlier once now so you can see we have successfully created component did mount functionality right it is being called only once at the time of component being mounted to the screen so whenever the home component is being displayed on the screen i can see this message similarly i can do here whatever i want okay so this is how component did mount works guys let me just show you now another one component did update okay component did update this is what i need to show you now again for this also you can use use effect guys that is what you will use and you will call a callback function you will again create a dependency with it and now this dependency won't be empty guys okay now this dependency won't be empty what does it mean it simply means that this statement or whatever you're writing inside it is dependent on your mounting as well as on this variable whatever you are writing here let's say this can be i uh, this can be anything related to the state so i want it to be related to toggle okay let's say i want i say it toggle and inside the statement again i write this but i write uh, let's say toggle updated or toggle updated so one what does this mean it uh, what is exactly this doing so let's go back refresh the page and let's check what happened actually yeah you can see once i have already got this message toggle updated so what is it exactly doing guys so component did mount basically says that i would run only when either your component is mounted or your state is updated okay or your dependency variable is updated so at the time of mounting toggle update was displayed you can see toggle update was displayed it was called once after that now 
if at any point this variable's value is changed so you can see its value is false and i know that whenever i click on this button its value is opposite so it will uh, change to true whenever if i click again it will change to false so this is what it means it says that this is my dependent i am dependent on this this use effect is dependent on this toggle variable and if it changes this function or whatever i write inside here would also get reloaded or updated this code will again you can say get implemented that is what it means so if i you can see closely if i click on that add one what two it has been changed to two because it got updated from false to true if i click again you would say it again got called three toggle update so it was getting updated and therefore toggle update was being called so it is only at the time when there is a update in either a state variable any state variable which is as a dependency so i am dependent on toggle and i would load myself once at the time of mounting okay that is how you can make your use effect dependent on something so that if anything changes or anything updates i want to see or i want to do something let's create another component did unmount guys the last one component did unmount and let's say you say uh, again use effect and now again you will have the dependency but that dependency will be again empty cuz i want this to be called only once at the time of unmount then what is the difference between this one and this one there is a difference of return guys there is a difference of return statement okay so if i write here a return statement and in the return statement i write this this is what is similar to component did unmount okay not mount but un mount okay if i go back i refresh the page okay uh, it got called no issue but if i go to the contact page and go back to the home page okay let me just see guys i think component did unmount use effect i think i'm doing something wrong let me just check guys okay guys i think it also needs to be a fat arrow or something of that sort so i will have to create something i guess like this and i think that should be fine let's see let's see okay yeah guys that was the issue similar issue so what exactly this means basically it means that this is how you need to write when you want to unmount and in the return statement whatever code you write will get implemented at the time of unmounting so i am at home page at this point and you can see i'm not getting this message why because my component home is still present on the screen it is not removed yet and therefore that is why i'm displaying it or that is why i'm seeing it now let's go further and simply go to the contact page so what will happen home component would be removed so I, i go to contact page and you can see component unmounted so home component was unmounted now i have moved back to the home component but i did not get any message let's move to get home page and you can see it has been updated to 2 it means it was called two times at the time of unmounting and guys this is how you use life cycle methods guys that's it that is how you use different life cycle methods i will just uncomment them okay and this file is basically accessible to you all guys okay so if you want to use them at any point you can use them guys call back function and arrow function uh, do not have a relation guys okay they are different yeah guys it will be component will unmount okay yeah sorry for that but you got right you got to know the basic difference right how they are going to be used 
so these are the main use effects guys which you will uh, mostly use in your application unless and until you are making very complex stuff this is what you'll use and guys this is the base so we will stop here guys we will stop here and that is it guys that is the end of your getting started with react bootcamp now let me just tell you again about the project which you need to submit okay sure i'm telling you about the project and how you will submit it so you will fill today's attendance sheet and uh, that will be complete okay that will be complete and if you have filled every single day's attendance sheet you will get your certificate for completion of the boot camp but if you want to get the project certification then you will have to submit the project as well okay i'll also speak in hindi guys okay guys the reason is there are international students as well that is why i don't speak in hindi i'll repeat it in hindi as well right the submission of project what you need to do so there will be a form circulated on on the groups whichsoever you are at so that form you need to fill and in that form there will be a uh, section or there will be a field known as project submission link or project link simply code on code sandbox and this guy is this link at the top this is your link you just simply copy it or you just simply click on this share button okay simply click on this share button uh let's say can view and i can just copy the sandbox link okay can view guys can view okay if you say can edit and then you send the link anyone would be able to edit this code no i don't want that i want can view simply go to share simply click on can view and simply copy this shared link and now you can share it with wh whomsoever you want on the internet and just submit this link in that form with other details and that's it that is how you need to submit the project now what you need to do in the project you just need to use all the different things we have implemented okay we have talked about use effect right so you can do something in use effect you can use the use effects you we have talked about states so you need to use states inside your project we have talked about nested components you need to use nested components we have talked about variables you need to use variables we have talked about routing multiple pages that is also what you need to use so all the different features which we have talked about you just need to create a application with it okay it can be anything whatsoever you want you want to create a professional portfolio go ahead create it you want to create a e-commerce platform clone go ahead create it you can do a small project a major project totally on you whatsoever you want okay but even if you want you can just uh, basically replicate the project which i have created don't just copy paste the code guys i will get to know so please if you want you can make a copy of it on your own and that would also be accepted no issue but make something guys that is what i want to tell you let me just see the comments guys if there is any doubts guys there will be a new update for the next batch i'm not sure when it will start but uh, that will be updated on the website so please have a view of the website and you want if you want to not join now but later that is totally fine we'll definitely have a new batch starting soon okay please share the telegram also just give me a sec guys guys give me a sec i will just get the whatsapp link so that you can be added into it okay give me a sec guys just give me a sec yeah guys i'll just share it don't worry guys you will get it okay 
so i already uh, shared with you the contact details of mine and i told you that if you have not received your previous certifications please message me uh, some details so you need to message me your name your email your phone number what you attended and uh, which certificate you did not receive and please be genuine guys okay if you have attended all the classes and then you have not received it if you have submitted the project and then you have not received it then only please share with me because we'll get to know if you have not done it and we'll simply block you okay if you're just simply disturbing us without any reason so please be very generous about it guys you will be shared a link okay you will be shared a submission link project submission link it is not yet shared it will be created and shared to you in that link there will be a section project submission or project link and you simply need to submit your code sandbox link guys that is what you need to do guys i will talk about it someone is asking that is there any cyber security or uh, ethical hacking related course i'll talk about it okay and we would uh, if we find definitely good people we will definitely have it okay so i'll talk about it and if i get to know any feedback if there is something happening we will definitely let you know yeah guys let me just share with you the today's attendance form so just a sec guys guys please take a screenshot of the link okay this is the link please take a screenshot as soon as possible i'll close it this is the attendance link for today guys day 7 and yeah guys i am also sharing you the whatsapp group link okay so if anyone is not present in the group and he or she wants to be added to it so that he, he or she can get all the updates i will share you that so just give me a sec for that also so i think uh, you have already copied it i'll close it now guys okay yeah i can see the submissions have started so okay i think it is working without a problem so just give me a sec guys i will share with you the whatsapp link so my screen would go blank for a second okay so no uh, not a problem so i've intentionally done it just a sec guys i just need to copy a whatsapp group link yeah guys i think now guys this is the link so let me just share with you guys this is a link for joining whatsapp group okay guys so if any one of you is not present i am pinning it at the top of the chat so you can just simply click on it and you can join the whatsapp group of dev town so that you can get all the details or all the updates and uh, i've already shared with you my contact detail and i'll just again share it so that if you want to connect with me so if you have any doubt if you uh, uh, are not able to find the form link if you have anything regarding that right doubt you can simply contact me just message me guys and i will try to resolve it i know i've seen lot of you have messaged me i was not able to reply but don't worry i will look into it okay if you have not received your certificates or anything for the previous uh, previous boot camps you will get it
yeah guys i have also shared my whatsapp number so you can contact me if you want to okay guys no issue i'll reshow the link this is last day no issue so this is the one please this is the last time i'm showing it so take a screenshot guys and fill it after the class or fill it right now whatsoever you want and please take a screenshot and fill it i'll just remove it in yep i'm removing it guys so fill it as soon as possible so that you don't miss it yeah so smart people can do that you can skip back to the stream and see the link <laughs> the uh, last date of project submission is guys uh, 20 guys 20 20 would be the last date for submitting the form and yeah guys thank you everyone for joining me for this amazing boot camp okay so yes we will definitely have a boot camp in continuation so if i find that there is good audience we will do some polls on our youtube channel and everything and if we find that some people are really interested in going ahead and doing a second advanced level you can say seven day boot camp on react then we will discuss and we will do a lot different topics in boot uh, you can say react or maybe we can do a simple clone or something of that sort as well so we will definitely do that if uh, i find a lot of people interested then we'll definitely do that guys so thank you everyone and this is the end of the boot camp for now and have a nice day be in a good shape and we will meet in a next move, uh, boot camp hopefully and we will definitely learn a lot of new things guys and definitely if you have any queries rela uh, related to the training and internship program and anything right you can simply contact me you can whatsapp me and i will try to resolve it project link guys i told you again and again would be shared on the whatsapp groups not yet created it will be shared okay you have 7 days focus on that first okay you will be shared the project link okay and guys please try on your own try to create something new try to basically even if you are just working with my you can say design right whatever i created even if you are trying to replicate it give your own touch to it okay give your own touch to it i want to see what you, all things you can create how creative you can be okay so definitely try that out and we will meet in whatever next boot camp we have and till then take care and have a nice day guys bye everyone